You start arguing with people from the Generation Z about LeBron James and Michael Jordan, and the only choice you have is to become an old person. I never feel older than when I have that conversation. If the audience isn't familiar, uh, a lot of Gen Zers on TikTok have been calling out Jordan for not having a left hand. You can come out and you can make the case and you can break LeBron down to his component parts and you can say all these things that you think are better than Jordan and you can make the point that you think that this particular era has a greater level of competition. Like all of these things that make perfect sense. And all I'm trying to say is we were there. This is not to say that you little youngsters don't have no point because you were not there. I'm just telling you, if you are going to try to make this argument, you just going to have to settle for the fact that you're right. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you think that you are correct, you are just going to have to be satisfied with the fact that you're correct. You're not going to get me to believe that you are right. You're not going to come out here and with your goddamn PowerPoint presentation and a laser pointer and start bringing all this stuff up and down. You could break out some sigmas. You could break out some deltas. You could break out all the Greek letters, the mu, to try to make this point and try to show me that no matter how you slice it, what frequency distribution or whatever performance that it was, that LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. You can go ahead and do all that. The problem is, dog, I was there. Like, we saw what it was. We saw what it looked like. It ain't this. Focus is a skill. Focus is a resource. Like, the ability when something is going down that matters to be like, I am doing this and nothing else matters. I have no fear of the consequences. I have no fear of what happens if this doesn't go right. I'm not thinking about anything else in the world than this thing that I am doing right now. Like the ability to lock in on doing something like that is the most valuable ability that there is when you're talking about any level of achievement at the highest levels and echelons of what you're doing, that you can block everything else and lock in on it. I can't think of any human being in life that has ever been as good at doing that one thing as Michael Jordan is. So if you talk about people that are on the same level, like a similar plane, whatever you bring up is not necessarily going to be a huge insult to the person that you're not going with. We're talking about the margins. What is the thing that separates this person from that person when both of them have an incredible set of accolades, attributes, talent, skills, everything else on both sides? But in the end, what we know about that one guy is he's going to be here no matter what, right? The other guy got better at it. But this guy right here, hey man, I seen things happen to this one guy that I know would never happen to this guy. And you can think that that is incorrect and you are welcome to do it. You just gonna have to be happy that you right. Like I feel like that's a lesson that so many of us could learn at various points because so much of the time, we, man, we just on the internet arguing about a bunch of bullshit, right? Like we just talk about a bunch of stuff that doesn't actually matter. And we get charged up, like we really, really get into it. And maybe if we could just say to ourselves very simply, I'm just going to have to be satisfied that I'm right. Because I'm going to be honest, I do that with y'all all the time. Social media is great when you, for a lack of a better term, because I don't want to sound classist and snobby, but for lack of a better term, if you are a regular person, rank and file, a member of the proletariat perhaps, right? If we say it in these sorts of terms, then you can feel better about it and feel like you're part of something that matters. So if you are a member of the proletariat, Social media gives you access to people that you kind of can't believe that you got access to, right? Like it, it makes the world smaller and brings these people that seem so far away, it brings you right up close to them, which I'm sure is cool for the proletariat. I don't know what it does for them people, but we have to acknowledge at times that this is a relationship based on a hierarchy and the hierarchy is y'all are here to see me talk. And if one of y'all comes up here to talk, I'm out. So I turn it off. I'm not going to pay no attention. But see, when you turn it off, you can still do that quote tweet on top of it. And so I get in there looking at that, and now I can't help it, right? Now y'all's badass kids is online calling me all kinds of names, right? Throwing all this stuff out here, telling me I done got old, telling me I'm stupid. And you got to understand, man. Today, I got retweeted by a cabinet member from the Trump administration, and it was a compliment. Like, my mind is completely upside down about what the world is. But with the Jordan LeBron thing, why it's, I guess it's fun is because it's never ending and it's cyclical and everything else. This is just how it goes. This is just what it is. And then one day you're going to look up and you're the oldest person at the table and you're going to be looking at the youngsters and you're going to be telling them that's cool. But I'm telling you, man, we were there.
And there's going to be some other group of children, assuming that the world ain't fried up by then, and they're going to be looking back the same way when you talk about LeBron and they talk about Big Vic from France and they saying all the same stuff and they're going to be pulling up these clips of LeBron getting devastated in the post by J.J. Barea, right? They're going to go back and talk about getting <laughs> swept by all these. They're going to pull out all that sort of stuff that you're trying to pull out on Michael Jordan and they're going to go back and they're going to look at them kids and they're going to be like, all right, I hear you. But we were there. But just like you, I'm going to have to be satisfied with being right. That's it. That's all that's going to happen. Y'all not going to bow down before me and tell me I'm right. Y'all are not going to be like, you know, the more I've been thinking about it, I've come around to your way of thinking. You're not going to do it. And even if you do, I'm not going to get no money. Prize picks is the most fun you can have by winning up to 25 times your money. And with the football season over, you can still win money with basketball and hockey. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You can pick combo projections across multiple sports from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. Prize Picks is really simple to play. You can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. So make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. 